I took a taxi, a Greenland taxi to the northernmost town in Greenland, maybe even the world. This was no ordinary taxi. Since there are no roads connecting to the town of Connick, a helicopter was the way to go. The bird's eye view of the landscape gave me an incredible appreciation for how isolated the community of Connick really is. Connick had been settled over 4,000 years ago but it turned into the village that we see today when Arctic native families were displaced so that the Thule Air Force Base could be constructed in the 1950s. Connick is like no place on earth. Temperatures can sink to negative numbers for months. The sun is missing for an entire season. Locked in ice or removed from the rest of the world besides two cargo ships a year, citizens of Connick lead a subsistence lifestyle. They depend on the ocean and the landscape for survival, and it drives their economy. So in touch with nature, it's second nature to them to see climate and environmental change as a challenge to their society. Sea ice is, uh, before 2002, about two meters thick. Right now it's 45 centimeters thin. So, climate changing is going fast. The amounts of ice is decreasing a lot. Since the 1990s there has been less. There are less areas where we can travel on the ice and we cannot travel as far as before. 60 or 70 percent of the ice is now melting. It used to be as thick as two meters, but for about five years now it is only one meter thick. To be only a hunter is now becoming limited. Since the ice is disappearing, I think our way of living now is moving to be more of a fisherman. The seal is so important to the community up here, also including my family. The skin is used for rope and for gloves and other traditional clothing. The meat of the seal is also important for the dogs and for the people up here, including my family. Economically, the seal skins also support us financially. We eat it and sell the skin for money. I never thought I would be a hunter. I wasn't raised that way. And now I am a hunter. My wife, she's a worker, and the way we pay the bills for electricity, for the oil, for the heat, for our house, I try to be supportive to the family as much as possible, to try to survive up here, economically balancing with my wife through the hunting and fishing. Mostly I rely on hunting as opposed to fishing, but after I heard about all the helifish being sold last winter, I thought maybe I would do more fishing. I thought maybe in the next year I would balance it by hunting and fishing at the same time. Now I am constantly eating from the animals I have caught from nature. That's how I survive and that's how I want to stay in the future. To be a hunter up here is getting hard. The pressure from the outside world is having an effect on the government. They are making more rules on hunting, so it makes it more difficult to be a hunter up here. The Greenlandic government is using methods of the European world that do not belong in our country, and this affects my way of life. These proud people are adaptable and see environmental change as natural, even if it means extreme hardship. Their connection to the rest of the world is through politics. Not everyone sees or acknowledges the probable causes for modern rapid changes to their grocery store, the ocean, or their roads, snow for their dog sleds. They feel trapped by a world that doesn't understand their ways or needs. Their existence depends on hunting and gathering, and international laws are restricting these activities, threatening their foundation for survival. Coupled with changing natural systems, poised for even more rapid transformation, their future is uncertain.